Hello and welcome to the CAD Geek blog. My name is Donnie Gladfelter and today we're going to be taking a first look at parametric constraints inside AutoCAD 2010. And this is perhaps one of the, the most powerful new features being introduced to AutoCAD 2010. And the premise behind it is with parametric constraints I can now make objects kind of geometrically and uh, spatially aware of one another. So perhaps I have two objects that need to be parallel or uh, a circle that needs to have a certain radius, uh, two lines that need to have a certain angle. Uh, really any, uh, any of these combinations can all be accomplished using this new feature known as parametric constraints. So rather than talking to you about it, I'd rather kind of show you a very, very simple uh, scenario or example of what we can do with parametric constraints. So first thing I need to do is go to the parametric tab. This is new in 2010. When I do that, I'll find I've got commands kind of grouped into two categories. I've got geometric and I've got dimensional. So I think it's pretty self-explanatory what we, what we have here. With geometric tools, I've got things like perpendicular, parallel, equals to, that type of thing. Whereas the dimensional is, uh, of course, a line, linear uh, entities or aligned, I can also define uh, a circle radius, an angle, and that type of thing, all through the dimensional tool. So really, uh, you know, neither is more valuable than the other, but really in combination is really where the full, uh, the full power of these constraints can be seen. So just to kind of show what can be done with parametric constraints, I'm going to just draw a very, very simple box. But you'll notice that I'm intentionally drawing this box so that, uh, well, how should I say this? I don't have any edges that are really parallel to one another, nor do I have any lines that have the same, same length. Uh, I don't have any right triangles, any of that uh, type of stuff that we all know needs to, uh, to make up a, a perfect rectangle. I need right angles, uh, lines that are parallel, and that type of thing. And so... With this very messy uh, box at this point, I'm going to use some geometric constraints to bring it into something that we'll all recognize a little bit uh, easier. So, first thing I probably want to do is clean up these kind of ugly edges. And so I do have a, uh, a command here to make two points coincide with one another. Now, the trick behind this, uh, this command here, you'll notice when I hover over the line, I get a little red blip at the end of that line. That's telling me which point I'm going to make coincide with this case, or in this case, this other point. So the, the two little red blips are where the, the two points will actually coincide. So I can just real quickly repeat the same process for my other uh, three corners, making sure to select, of course, the right grip or the right part of that line, which in this case needs to be the end. And there I now have um, a perfect, uh, perfect closed region. It's, it's still not a perfect box, but the, the ends at least intersect. They make right tri or sorry, they don't make right triangles, but they do make a, a clean intersecting point. So with some further geometric constraints, I can start making this look more like a box. And so the first thing we need to do is use the perpendicular command to define two of these edges perpendicular to one another. So just like that, you'll notice I click those two. I have now made those two edges perpendicular with one another, and you'll notice this little icon comes up. And what's really neat about this, if I hover over it, it'll show me the two objects that are perpendicular to one another. Uh, these don't necessarily have to intersect or anything like that. They you know, just have to be perpendicular to one another. And so that I don't kind of get lost in space, I can hover over any of these uh, geometric constraint icons and really see what AutoCAD is doing and, and and why it's actually making the shape that it's actually making. So uh, I've gotten these two edges taken care of, but I do have the two bottom edges uh, still to worry about. So the next thing we're going to do is use the parallel tool to make two lines parallel with one another. So I'll select this edge and this edge, and you'll notice those two are now uh, you know, constrained properly. And I can just simply repeat that same process for my other two edges of this box. And in doing that, you'll see I now have, uh, you know, what's a perfect rectangle, so to speak. I've got four corners that make right angles and four, uh, four edges where, you know, either edge actually 
represents the, the same length. So this is all dynamically linked to one another. If I wanted, I could actually pick up this line. No, no smoke and mirrors here. And I'm just going to pick it up. And all I have is the line selected. I grip edited the line, but yet all the other objects rotated when I moved that object. And in this case, it was because of the geometric constraints that I had defined. The only way to, to preserve those was to actually uh, rotate the other three objects as well. So that's all neat, but perhaps I want to have a little bit more dimensional control over these objects. And, and so that's why I have the, uh, the dimensional tools. Now, I think if you're somewhat familiar with dimensioning in regular AutoCAD, these tools aren't going to be too hard to grasp. Uh, the, the thing to keep in mind is that I need to uh, keep an eye out for that little red blip that comes up because that is the point that this uh, dimensional constraint is being created from. So I'll select those two points. I'll just drag this guy out here to the, the outside of my, my box in this case. And we're going to repeat the same, uh, same process here on my other edges. And let's see, it should allow me to do this. Make sure I don't have anything selected. Let's try this again real quick. There we go. So it looked like I was stuck in the other uh, geometric constraint command still. So I'm going to do that. You know, notice I now have dimension one and dimension two. I can customize these names if I wish. But really the neat part is that with this little parameters manager that I now have, I can come in here and actually define the length. So of course, I've got this really ugly value right now. Maybe I want it to just be an even uh, three units by maybe five. Notice what now happens with the model. Um, the, this drawing, the box, is now exactly five units. Both of these edges are five units long because they're parallel and perpendicular. And again, the two upper and lower edges, or sorry, the upper and lower edge, uh, are each three units long. And so just like that, I've got a model or a drawing that now interacts with itself, so to speak, and, and without any major effort on my part. And so there is a very, very basic look at parametric constraints inside of AutoCAD 2010. Do keep your eye out for some future posts on this topic here at the CAD Geek blog.